everybody, it's Tiffany from Coulter's Workshop, long time no see. The year is currently 2021 and I have not posted a video in a long time and I recently started going through a lot of the clips that I have filmed over the past while. I feel like from about August or September last year up until Christmas, I did film a lot of the projects that I was doing. Some of them I didn't finish filming because if you've been watching some of my videos for a little while, you know that I often will be working on something and decide after I've started it, it could be a custom order and I'll think, oh, I should film this. And then I will be working on it in little pockets of time that I have and then get ahead of myself and forget to keep filming the different stages. And so that happens a lot. So right now I've been trying to go through the footage that I have from the past six months or so and see what things I do still want to put up on my channel and if you don't know I primarily do this for myself so it's really a lot of things that I have done for orders or home projects so that I can look back and watch them as a memory or just so that if I'm remaking the same sewing project again in the future and if I've lost the paper that I've written the pattern down on that I've come up with or anything like that, or if I have questions about the measurements for a border that I used or anything, then I have it somewhere saved for myself. So uh, no, Coulter's Workshop itself as my business is not my, primarily, my primary form of work. So I do have a full-time job. I do Coulter's Workshop on the side and for the past six months or so it got crazy with custom orders at Christmas which I'm so grateful for but that also means that I started and stopped a lot of clips and things like that so today's video is going to be the tutorial on how I upcycled a pair a set of curtains and I made a pin tuck duvet cover out of it and it's really cute and I did want to share that because it's super easy it doesn't have to be complicated I feel like because of it just being a larger item, some people might be scared to jump into that, but it's super simple. And I also just feel like with um, lockdown and things like that, it might be easy to get uh, curtains or something used on like Craigslist or something, you know, and then you can upcycle it and make something new and fresh for your home from it, which is awesome. Um, because I love recycling and reusing things and making something from what you already have on hand. And so the clips that I have are missing some content because that was something that I made. It was either in August or September and it was right before things got really busy during the pre-Christmas rush. So I kind of quickly finished it so that it was out of my workspace so that I could plow on with orders. So I hope <laughs> that People aren't um, thoroughly disappointed with how choppy the next several posts of videos are going to be. I have at least five or six videos that I know I for sure would like to complete just so that they are mostly there. So that's why I have this little intro happening. I will probably put a similar intro in other videos just to let you know that it is incredibly old content and that I can't go back and refilm the portions that I didn't end up filming. So um, I hope you enjoy today's video and as much as I can I will film explaining verbally um, anything that may be missing while I'm editing together the clips that I do have from the video. So um, if you have any questions my contact information is always listed down below. As well, uh, I know I don't post frequently on YouTube at all because, like I mentioned, it's just not a priority in my business. So if you would like to see what I'm making on a regular basis or see what I'm making for custom orders and things like that, my Instagram is listed down below and that's where you can find me the most often. Okay, so the first thing that I did was cut off the top part where the top part of the curtains and the hangers are. And as you can see, it was lined, right? So we're gonna um, end up ditching this lining. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit more difficult to see, but basically I'm working with the reverse side of the curtain. So as you can see, there's a couple of seams here, but it doesn't matter because on the front side, you can hardly notice them. They're just really well made like that. 
and what I've done is marked 10 inch dots but every other row is staggered so like for example this row there's a dot here and there's a dot here and here but then in the row next to it like 10 inches over this dot is five inches down if that makes sense so then that row is staggered so I'm gonna go ahead and try this so basically from what I understand oh also I've ditched the lining as well so I just cut it it was sewn into the sides and the top but the bottom was not attached if that makes sense so um, I just really roughly cut it doesn't matter what it's gonna end up looking like because this edge of the material is not going to be there eventually anyway so for each one you're just going to grab where it is on the wrong side of the material again so pinch it and you're going to give it a little twist like that and then you're just going to stitch right across here all right so i finished doing all of the pin tucking and i've also already sewn the back on so for the pin tucking like i was explaining before i made all of my marks and i just picked up each piece twisted it and stitched it right across just like this and then on the front side each little pin tuck looks like that so if you want it to be more floofy do more pin tucks which of course you'll need to make sure that you have a large enough piece of fabric because the more pin tucks you do the more um, the fabric gets sucked in right so it becomes smaller so what I ended up doing was I left the front of this much much bigger it was actually about 20 inches bigger all the way around I feel like you could probably get away with about 10 inches bigger but I went for 20 just because I hadn't done it before and I wasn't exactly sure how much fabric was really going to be taken up by the pin tucks and then the back of the juvet cover is just going to be a solid piece so the front I worked on first like I was saying um, left the material much much bigger than I needed did all of the pin tucks then I roughly cut off the excess to make it a little bit more manageable. So I ended up laying the um, front side, so the pin tuck side, with the right side of the material facing up on my floor. Then for the back side, so the side that's just flat, I had cut that pretty well to size, uh, giving myself about an inch and a bit all the way around. And with that true cut piece I sort of centered the back right side down on top and then pinned it all the way around if that makes sense and the other thing that I did was the original hems on the curtains here um, are really nicely finished and the bottom hems didn't have the lining sewn in um, like you would have seen me cut away the lining in an earlier clip but the inside hem didn't have the lining, right? It was just blind stitched itself there. So I'm keeping this as the true bottom of the duvet cover. And I've got, like I was saying, I've got the backing stitch on here now. It's just so much. <laughs> it's so hard to show you. Um, so I've done the, like, up the side, across the top, and down the other side. Left the bottom completely open for now. And now that I have it turned and I'm happy with it and everything, I'm going to go ahead and serge those seams that I made as well. Okay, so from the last clip, we basically talked about how I was going to serge the edges inside. So there's the serging there. And like I mentioned, the bottoms of the the bottom of the duvet cover was the original hem on the curtains as well and all I ended up doing was using this it's a ribbon but it feels cottony like a crochet so sort of gives you that macrame type feel because of the off-white so I put one two three four five sets of ties all the way across the bottom and you could do whatever type of closure you want you could do a zipper closure or a velcro or little snaps but I wanted to go 
for the little ties so that I could make them into little bows and just so that it gives a little bit of a decorative feel to the bottom and because it's super simple. So I just have my white duvet inside there and I just cut these about like nine inches or so depending on how long you want the little bows to hang. <laughs> so this is what the duvet cover looks like on the bed um, and I did make a little matching pillow just with some of the leftovers as well and I put some lace around the edges of that. So I'm really happy with it. I think it suits the style of the room and essentially it's just a big pillowcase that you sew the long side across the top, down the bottom, and turn it right side out and that's it. So um, really simple, easy to do in a quick and inexpensive way to freshen up your space.